Hi, old chums. It's me, Jay, and joining me as always is my co-host, Colin. Hey, Colin. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm boldly going today. I'm uh, on the old enterprise. And you may notice there's a third face here. We've got a special guest with us. It's artist Tom Kelly. Hey, how are you doing, Tom? Joining us all the way from right. Chicago, right? We're going international yeah, this week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hey, Tom. I mean, it's, it, I can't believe it's, it's been just over a year since I met you in a Star Wars celebration, wasn't it? So, um, yeah, which yeah. was totally cool. Tom, Tom was uh, a good old chum there. Gave me a bit of a show round, and we went out for a few drinks and stuff. So it was wicked. Had a really, really good time um, hanging out at the old Star Wars. So, uh, so Tom, you've um, you've been super busy. You've got a Kickstarter that you're about to start. Why don't you tell us a bit about that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, the Kickstarter kicks off on July 1st, the 1st of July. Mm -hmm. And the Kickstarter basic, basically is uh, an extension of my lifelong, um, uh, you know, favorite things. Uh, I grew up, on, you know, I was born in 72. So I grew up watching uh, Hammer Horror films, monster movies, and Kung Fu theater. So my book, my, my graphic novel, is uh, called The Foot Fist Frankenstein. It basically works on the premise of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Uh, after, after the events of that book, uh, finds, you know, wanders the earth and, and sort of finds a, a, like a Shaolin type of monastery to, to mm. meditate and find peace. And of course, nothing ever la you know no nothing good can come of that <laughs> and so the monastery ends up um being attacked by a warlord, and uh it essentially uh everyone but Frankenstein you know in the monastery is wiped out, and he's upset about this, so he sort of goes on a true Hong Kong style revenge sort of scenario. This sounds badass, uh, by the way. I'm, I'm yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> I, I often say, you know, the tagline is it's, it's uh, John Wick meets the Incredible Hulk by way of Kung Fu theater. Yeah. Cool. Yes, that sounds That's good. a pitch. Yeah. Yeah. That's wicked. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I, I absolutely love your art, Tom, because I've been, I, I look at all your stuff on Instagram and we'll, we'll share that up in a minute. And, but I mean, I mean, cool. your style is so. I mean, it's going to be perfect for this. I, I really can't wait to see it. It's going to be amazing. Well, it, that, that's one of the things is trying to come up with your own project to do that, mm. um, you know, you want to do. I mean, this book, it's, it's a graphic novel. It's 120 plus pages wow. of, you know, story and art. So you can't get bored of it. Like, you can't be like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore after, like, six to ten pages in. Like, you really, yeah. you're committed for the long haul. So that's why I said it's, like, stuff that I grew up on as a kid that, uh, you know, uh, you know, helped fuel my imagination. So I, I watch, you know, here in the United States, uh, growing up as a kid, you only had three channels and, like, the public broadcast exactly. system so it was, <laughs> yeah so you, your your options were really limited like when it was raining and you couldn't play with your friends usually you had saturday or like you know sunday afternoon matinees and they were usually like old monster movies or um like uh, you know things yeah like a lot of the, the peter cushing hammer horror stuff you know, was on all the time, or that stuff was on like late at night, like on a Friday night or something. So right. you'd stay up and you'd watch that. And then that time period in that era was also, you know, Bruce Lee was very big and, and very popular. So, uh, you know, martial arts movies and TV shows were like huge. I mean, the 80s essentially is where we kind of get like the world discovered ninjas. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and so yeah, shows like, long, sorry, yeah, how... shows like Kane from Kung Fu and stuff like that, right? Wandering the Earth. And oh, yeah. Like The Justice, Legend of right? Kung Fu. 
Yeah, uh, you know, I remember like Lee Van Cleef was in that show, The Master, all oh, the yeah, American yeah. Ninja movies. I love those. Um, Joe then, Armstrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, who like has Michael ninjas that wear bright yellow outfits and purple outfits? Like, what ninjas do that? Wait, you know the baddies? The wait, baddies always have, like, multicolored rainbow ninjas. What's that all about? <laughs> well, you have to know. Like, I mean, you see, that's, that's the funny thing. And I, and I have, you know, ninjas in my story. And uh, I ended up going, you know, with the classic, you know, black look. Um, but you know, you look at like Marvel comics, like why were all Daredevil's um, ninjas red? red? Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh no, they're bad. I yeah. mean, they're mostly black, and then they're just red in the highlights because it was like red easier work. to print. Yeah, <laughs> and it's Daredevil, so everything was red. But like that's why Elektra's red. So it's, it's, it's yeah. you know, it's it's so you can just kind of know who the good guys and the bad guys are real yeah. quick. Like, oh, but, the purple ninjas are bad, but the blue ones, ah! But in American yeah. Ninja, I, I remember seeing, like, they had the ninja training camp. You'd have, like, a set of yellow ninjas, some blue ones, some pink ones. And I was just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, scary yeah. scary bad ninjas like, are these? <laughs> well, like, remember even in, uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's Bruce Lee's Game of Death where he goes onto the island. Yeah, and, oh, that's uh, uh, Enter the Dragon, right? Where they're all in, okay, the, right. in the, the, the Yellow Dragon, with John, Yeah, with John Saxon and <laughs> um, Jim Kelly and those guys. And you'll notice, like, they're wearing different karate gi. Yeah. Like, John Saxon and Jim Kelly have a different karate gi. Bruce right. is in his, like, skin tight or his, of course, like, so ripped kung the top fu off, boxer. Right. <laughs> right. And then the rest of them are in, like, those sort of white gis. Except so for the guards like, and oh, brown. Yeah, like, Right. Well, yeah, of course. You know, you got to know their guards. You know, they're guarding martial artists. That's that's you know, always fun stuff like that. So yeah, a lot of a lot of that stuff, a lot of those elements, I did actually work into uh, you know my comic. Right. In um, not necessarily playing on those tropes, but using them sort of similar ways that they did in those movies and TV shows. To like, you know, who the bad guy is. You know, who the good guy is pretty in a fight you can't get confused you know well, sure, like, that's why like, you see, green like, head. <laughs> well you know that's <laughs> the interesting thing is like uh my character isn't really a traditional uh universal herman munster type um uh, Fr uh frankenstein uh i so well okay so I'll, I'll walk you guys sort of through it from the get-go it started yeah. with an idea Oh, like I was reading comic books and I, it was like a Superman comic and I was, you know, reading it and Superman's fighting like Mongol or, or like some powerful alien warlord mm -hmm. or robot and Superman doesn't fight. Superman's like a bruiser. He doesn't yeah. actually fight. Like when you look at Batman, Batman has like fighting poses and stances and he gives like yeah. neck thrusts and elbows. But Superman's very just like. Just Superman doesn't really community. know how to fight, really, does he? I mean, he's just powerful. Like, yeah, he's, not, he's, he's not, just not so yeah. trained. Right, and and I that got me thinking, and then I thought of a character like the Hulk. Like the Hulk doesn't fight. The Hulk just kind of shows up and is just barrels into things. Wreck shot. He like, smashes. Even when he, Right, yeah, he smashes the so Hulk hands, right? Hulk smash. Yeah, yeah. But like even when he fights like the abomination or somebody who's almost as strong as he is, uh there's no technique. And mm. and that got me thinking of like, wow, like what what would it be like if characters like a character like that, like a Hulk, knew how to fight, knew how to mm. properly fight and could throw a strike or a kick and things like that. And you know, really, sort of have a have a, a purpose behind just like oh, me strong, you know. Mm -hmm. So when yeah. I was designing the character, when I was coming up with ideas, I was like, well, you know, like you sort of rack your brain of like I could make my own Hulk-like character, and how do I make him different enough from the Hulk? Is one thing. And then how do I, you know, make him stand out in his own way? 
so I, I started like really thinking back to the, like, the martial arts movies and TV shows and stuff, as well as different versions of Frankenstein. Like the Hammer Horror Frankenstein is very different from the universal like mm-hmm. Herman Munster mm-hmm. style Frankenstein. So, and then when you look in comic books, there, there's a lot of different ones yeah. because the character Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein, it is public domain. That's another reason why I can use the character. Right. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of interpretations you can you can, you know, kind of use and plug into um, your visual needs if you want. Like, so I started going over things and 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 designing the character that I think would work best for the way I wanted to tell the story. Um, one of the things was like, yeah, I, I didn't want him to be green because right. he'd just kind of be the Hulk, right? Yeah, you know, and and like if you sit there and you say like, oh, maybe make him like red, and you're like, well, that's a lot like Hellboy, and so he like is a lot of like tinkering with the sauce to kind of get it just right. Mm. Um, I took elements from things like the Legend of Kung Fu, um, like Mortal Kombat. Uh, Street monkey. Fighter, yeah, <laughs> monkey. <laughs> um, uh, different anime looks and different like manga stylings and, and things like that, and try to fuse it into this hybrid of a, a creature that would fit in that world, but still be obviously a monster in that world. Wow, it sounds wicked. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I mean, like I said, it really is like it's. Um, I'm not I'm not Ernest Hemingway or anything like that. So the writing is is um, the writing serves the art for me. So it's a simple story. It's like all right, he's at peace. People come in, they ruin his peace, and they set him on a, a mission of vengeance. And then the rest of the comic, like the second half of the book, is. You know, like John Wick, just messing people up, kung fu style. You know, awesome. Okay. So, so, are you, so um, did you? Go on. Sorry. Go on. I was just going to say, have you have you done any sort of martial arts yourself or any of that sort of stuff? Or, I mean, how did you to to get it into the book? How did you sort of did you have to do a lot of referencing? Well, I did a lot of referencing. I'm not a martial artist. I mm-hmm. um I did you know I did sports. I was a a collegiate uh, wrestler. I did that in high school and college. Um, I know and interact with a lot of different people who do mixed martial arts. Mm -hmm. Um, But I was never... um, See, the thing about it is, is that, like, I like the really theatrical, not real parts of martial arts. Mm -hmm. So I like that, like... I mean, that's why, like, Bruce Lee is that borderline. Mm Because, you know, you watch those films of that one-inch punch, and you don't think it's possible a person can do that you know yeah. or you know you can see his training regiments like i have um i have one of his like training books like for the art of jeet kune do and it's like you know he could do like two finger push-ups you just like it down mm-hmm. like do sets of that like he'd sit Jay there and, jump on them and jump on them yeah yeah or like he'd sit there with his like what we call now like a like a it's like a. It's used for medical therapy, like when you can't work out to stimulate your muscles. It's kind of like a tens unit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He would type. He would do his typing while he would be hooked up to that, so that like even when he was passive, he was still working out. Wow. So, um, what I ended up doing was I would watch. I'd study a lot of martial arts movies, TV show, martial artists. I assembled a, a pretty large um, like reference file on my computer and uh, on actually Pinterest. I go and I have like dedicated oh, Pinterest yeah. boards to like martial arts or fighting or manga or anime. And I just sort of took all that stuff and sort of picked and choose what I wanted. So mm-hmm. um, that's another thing too. Like, it's called the Foot Fist Frankenstein. That's the title because I didn't want to just say Kung Fu. That. Yeah. Because <laughs> you want to use all kinds of martial arts. He fights. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even the world that I've sort of set up and created, um, it isn't, it's kind of like um, a Gotham City or a Metropolis in that mm-hmm. it's got everything it needs as a place to be, right? Or like right. the world of Conan. It's not, the, it's not our world, but it's a world that's very, very similar. Yeah. Okay. Um, be, because that, for me, was like, I also was trying to think of like, when was Frankenstein written? And then like, what in Japan and China was happening in that time frame? Yeah. And it was like, too hard to shoehorn like bits that I wanted to work in. So mm-hmm. I just kind of decided like, it's a fictional, you know, martial arts world. So now I have everything. I it can gives have you a lot more freedom. Samurai right, to do and what Chinese you want. boxer. Yeah. 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 I can have people use Sabat or I can have people use Krav Maga or I can have people use Kung Fu. And that just makes it more I fun all around. Have... Because Kung Fu moves yeah. are very kind of flamboyant and different fighting styles look different. So you can get, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to have like a baddie turn up who does one, one style or whatever versus, yeah. you know, the Kung Fu muscle. Like yeah. if you think about something like, um, uh, Kill Bill, say parts one and two, and how yeah. in part, like, part um, one she's got like a movie story. like um, yeah, or and like, then in, in part like... two she has the kung fu master, so like she's got oh yeah, you know, both, yeah yeah, both both sides and various wild styles of uh, you know they've got the, the sort of dragon move yeah that cool yeah, yeah, the and, five you know, figure death pose which... and you know yeah, yeah. So, and, yeah like... and that was actually like that was really liberating because it allowed me then to be like okay now I can have all these different weapons and monsters and characters or not monsters but like now I can train my monster as a you know a, a, an overall like it's like Batman Batman's the perfect fighter like every fighting style he studied yeah. you know, like there's always yeah, yeah. a flashback of him doing stuff so um, it's 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 freeing because it can, you can tell your story any way you want. And I don't have to worry about someone saying like, well, in this era of Japan, they weren't really using those swords right now. And and they would, and they would totally do that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So that, that helps solve some, (laughs) some conversations down the line. And it's freeing because I can use all different martial arts weapons, fighting styles, traditions. Yeah, so, so if we're following um, Frankenstein on his journey, um, and you mentioned like uh, that, you know, you saw some of the Hammer horror movies and stuff like that, will we get any other monsters come up against him at any point? Any of the other uh, classic monsters? Well, have you got that worked in? The Wolf Man. Yes, yeah, yeah. No, yes and no. In in this story, it's mostly just the the Frankenstein monster and a lot of uh, you know martial arts you know, warlords and soldiers mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, in future stories, uh, you will see other, not like direct, um, not direct like lifts of say like the Wolfman, right? Mm-hmm. Because I really, like even though it's using the Frankenstein monster, it's I'm not trying to make it about like magic in the occult. Mm-hmm. I, I really want to keep it more a very like a street level, like Hong Kong style fighting sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So if I was to say like the Wolfman, I would have it as an individual who Just thinks hairy. they are a wolf. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, but like, like the term <laughs> berserker comes from Vikings who wore like, like, wo- yeah. like bear pets. Right. And like mm-hmm. they worked themselves up into a frenzy and we're like wild animals. Mm. Mm. And that's how we sort of get the word berserker because yeah, it comes yeah, from berserk. Cool. Zerk, and those are, you know. So that's what it would kind of be. It would be someone who like, because even like lots of other wolfman legends are like a skinwalker where they wear mm. the skin of a, of a wolf yeah, and that's yeah. how they transform. Mm. So I would see it more of almost like a, a berserk, like an insane, um, yeah. you know, psychotic, you mm. know, killer who who that would be his persona like when he dons okay. the wolf you know suit he becomes this killing you yeah, know, yeah. Warrior. i like that, that sounds, that sounds really like cool <laughs> so just yeah. about the art um are you uh full digital or are you old school like using like the uh the boards and the, 
Pence is an English. Well, here, well, here I'll, I'll show you guys. I have some of the pages yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the advantage of being in the studio is I actually yeah. have stuff. An exclusive. Um, so I work. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, actually, it is. Yeah, almost nobody sees it here. You know. Uh, so I work like fifty-fifty, like half analog and half digital. So like, uh, this is the cover. Awesome. Oh, wow. I guess if you send us some images, we'll put them on the video as well. So that's yeah. So this is like a splash page. This is like another nice. splash page. Nice. And I will send you guys images so you can you know see these yeah. clearer and. Uh, more organized and concise but my style really is um my working process is, is uh half digital and half analog because that's just kind of something to do with my age uh i'm 48 so i learned all the analog stuff like kind of first yeah. and uh adapted to the computer like late in my college years like so i've been using like computer tech since uh, like 1991. Right. Oh, wow. So okay. A while, <laughs> like a, a long time. But for the like for the process of making comics, that really hasn't really fully integrated into like 2000. Like if you guys yeah. look at like the old image comics and you look at how they were like computer mm. colored and like you see these like hmm like not not so good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Whereas like now almost everything is colored on the computer and it looks fine. Like yeah. it it, yeah. it doesn't look like it's off. Like the gradients don't seem like the, they're the weird. Or, up. You know, things are clean. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think also it's the people using the tech. Yeah. Like yeah, have gotten better at getting the look they want rather than just um relying on the computer to do whatever they need it to do. Yeah. Like it's it's uh I always think of it, so I'm just moving the screen around a little bit, but um, I always think of it a little bit like, um, well, like a chef. When chefs go to school, they learn how to use all the knives and the mixers and cutting equipment, and they learn how to use it properly, but it takes them a little bit to sort of really get a handle on how to do it. Like, they have to do it a couple times and really get it ingrained. Like, I have... You know, I have an iPad Pro. I have a you know a graphic tablet that you know I draw on the screen and stuff with. Mm -hmm. But I also still am like very very like old school, you know, sketchbooks and stuff like that. So it's like, yeah, I just I have you know different sketches and drawings and fight sure. scenes and stuff like that there. So, so it's uh for me it's a, a very 50 50 digital to analog process um I, I i use the computer a lot but for the actual raw drawing of stuff it's it is pen and paper pen it's pencil yeah. and paper. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, we're starting to run out of time now, Tom. So tell us a bit more about the actual Kickstarter campaign. When does it start? What 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 do we need to be doing? Okay, so the Kickstarter campaign is going to kick off in uh, on July first, the first of July. Um, I'll I'll send you guys links, but if you go to Kickstarter.com um, and you either look up, you can look up Tom Kelly or you can look up Foot Fist Frankenstein. That's, okay. you know, foot, fist, Frankenstein. <laughs> and it'll, that'll take you right. I mean, there'll be links, but that'll take you right to the Kickstarter page. Uh, once you get there, you'll get a video that's going to give you, um, you know, an intro to like who I am and uh, what the book's about, as well as examples of the artwork, the different rewards tiers, and, uh, you know, trying to answer questions about, what people who are interested in uh, or, or curious might want to find out more about, you know, me and my Kickstarter. Great. What sort cool. of uh, re reward tiers are you going to be having? Or have it not quite finalized that yet? Uh, I'm finishing up with that, but um, basically the reward tiers, there's um, two things of note. Um, I have two digital tiers. I have a $5 digital tier and a $10 digital tier. Um, the $5 is the simple graphic novel 
um, just in digital format. And then uh, the, the $10 tier is like a deluxe digital format. You get an alternate, an alternative cover. Um, you get uh, a, a variety of like bonus, like uh, basically I did a whole bunch of art just for the Kickstarter version too. So okay. the book is 120 pages with um, like, I think I like about 11 or 12 pinups from different artists um, all around the country that I know. Awesome. Uh, they were right. kind enough to help me out, so they did mm. that. And I also contributed a few more like uh, illustrations and pinups uh, for the back of the book to sort of round out that, that group. The Kickstarter ones are exclusive to Kickstarter. So even if they are like, even if later on I release digital versions of the book down the line, the stuff you get on Kickstarter is exclusive to the Kickstarter campaign. Right. Um, you'll also get like character designs. You get a digital copy of the um, of my script. This this monstrous beast of a thing. You know. <laughs> wow. You get the electronic copy of that. So. You can, I mean, some people are very process oriented and they want to know, um, you know, they want to see how, uh, you know, the sauce is made. And, uh, you know, I wrote out the script specifically to help um, my letterer. I, I had a person letter the book. Um, his name is Marshall Dillon. He's a professional mm -hmm. letterer. He's lettered things for Marvel, DC, Image, Dark Horse, yeah. pretty much everyone in the, in the comic book industry. Um, so, uh, I worked a lot of it Marvel style in that, like I had a, a rough idea and then sort of drew, um, onto the pages, how I wanted the story to flow and then sort of dialogued it on the second pass. Um, but when I knew I was having uh, a letter, I actually went and formally created a script. So, you know, okay. you can literally just like open up the pages and see what things stayed, what things changed. And this is the raw script. This isn't a perfect script. Like you're getting my working script. Mm. So you're going to see yeah. ugly bits in there. Things I misspelled, <laughs> um, things realness. that were changed and not changed. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, like you can send away for books or scripts and, you know, they're perfect. They're like, oh, this is exactly the movie. It's like, well, that's not how that's it went. Point. But yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We'll see the rock. Uh, other... Other rewards on the Kickstarter are, um, well, those, uh, those pages that I just showed you, those are all going to be part of the different Kickstarter reward tiers. Uh, okay. I have the cover, the original cover art. Um, I have three interior splash pages at 11 by 17. Uh, also, I have some other little fun little things. So some of the tiers, um, after... I have bonus sketchbook, which is a That's Ninja cool. Turtle themed sketchbook. Nice. So it's a lot of fun, you know, ninja style Ninja Turtles. That's going to be as part of the bundle for some of the bundled tiers. And then uh, instead of doing a, like a sketch cover where I had to print out a, a blank cover, uh, I'm doing like a dust cover. So it's like old school, like when you were in school covering your books. Yeah. You can yeah. use like grocery bags or whatever. So this is the blank cover version. Then I'm doing commission versions where you can get a commission on the front cover. Oh, so, wow. Wow, nice. yeah, so that'd be like a sketch commission. Or on, on another tier, on the tier above that, you're getting like a wraparound cover. Nice. And the wraparound, well, the wraparound cover, you get two characters on it. And then the front cover, you get one because it's easier for me to draw without going insane. <laughs> and the blank is so, you know, if you just want to support, but maybe you, you had no other artists or, or you yourself want to draw on it, you know, you're totally free to do that. Cool. So the, the different tiers are fun. They have a lot of uh, really cool things, like really cool things that um, if you like artwork, or want to support me, you can really get some nice stuff. <laughs> well, I, I'm very excited by the sound of this book, so I'm definitely getting on there, on that Kickstarter. 
for sure. Yeah, really it's a cool, work, yeah. it, it's a cool story. It's a cool, it's a cool, cool story. Yeah, um, it sounds great. Yeah, to me. Fruit so Fist Frankenstein. Right yeah. It's right up my street. Yeah, yeah, cool, definitely. cool, cool. Right. Well, it's up so, my street, of course. Yeah, <laughs> it's up mine, old chum. It's up mine. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Tom, thank you so much for coming on today. Um, where can we see more of your artwork on Instagram? Uh, you can find me on Instagram under my name. It's uh, Tom Kelly Art on Instagram. Uh, the main website I uh, post to the most is uh, my DeviantArt page, which is yep. uh, TomKellyArt.DeviantArt.com. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm on Facebook under my name, Tom Kelly, uh, in Chicago, so you can always follow me there. But uh, the best really way to follow me is on either Instagram or uh, at my web page, on my DeviantArt page. Because I am I check in with those the most, and I get the most immediate <laughs> feedback from them, you know. Cool. Great. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And Ooh. I think that's, uh, that's a wrap for this week, isn't it, Colin? That I do. Oh. That I do, pig. Well, all the places that, um, <laughs> that you can find <laughs> us will all be listed below. Uh, and until next time, free to beam up. Cool.